It is a very rare appeal in which the Privy Council finds it necessary to review for itself and to overturn concurrent findings of courts below in a case involving substantial questions of fact, particularly when the central issue is the probity of one side's behaviour. This is, however, such an appeal. The appellant, Inter-American Asset Management Fund, IAMF, is a Bahamian mutual fund. The respondents are Conticorp SA of Ecuador and three brothers, Dr. Leonardis, Luis and Jaime Ortega, who were directors and controlling personalities in Conticor. Conticor owned Grupo Financiero Conticorp SA, GFC, the principal subsidiaries of which were two banks, Banco Continental SA of Ecuador and its Netherlands Antilles subsidiary, BCO Curaçao, for which Banco Continental was under Ecuadorian law responsible. BCO Curaçao had invested some 190 million US dollars in IAMF, which held as a result some cash, shares in certain companies, and a large portfolio of loans made mainly to Conticor and Conticor related companies. From November 1995 onwards, there was a run on both banks. In March 1996, the Central Bank of Ecuador rescued them by a large subordinated loan in return for a transfer of control over both. Following a default in repayment, the loan was converted into new equity in uh, Banco Continental and all the old shares were cancelled. The appeal concerns three transactions entered into between IAMF and Conticor in the months immediately before the Central Bank rescue in March 1996. In essence, IAMF surrendered its cash and its portfolio of shares and loans to Conticor in return for most of Conticor's shares in GFC. Such shares are now valueless following the central bank rescue and the cancellation of the old shares in Banco Continental. The three transactions were all executed by a Mr. Taylor, a Bahamian accountant, whose stated position was sole director and investment advisor of IAMF, and who was remunerated by the annual sum of $2,500 US dollars. IAMF claims in these proceedings the full face value of the cash, shares, and loans which it surrendered to Conticor. It puts its case primarily on the basis that Mr. Taylor acted at all times on the respondent's instructions without giving independent thought to the transactions and so breached his fiduciary duties to IAMF, and that the respondents, by giving such instructions, dishonestly procured or assisted his breaches of fiduciary duties. The courts below dismissed IAMF's claim, taking the view into ALIA that so long as GFC shares had some value at the dates of the transactions, no question of dishonesty arose, that in any event the transactions were part of a long-standing plan to convert debt for equity, to which uh, Mr. Intriago, the Inspector of Banks of Ex Ecuador, had also agreed or was reasonably understood to have agreed orally in meetings with the respondents in January 1996, and that the respondents were acting honestly. The judge also considered that the respondents could not be said to have assisted Mr. Taylor because he said he relied on a merchant bank, Ansbacker, through which most of the transactions were channeled to vet them, most of the instructions were channeled to vet them, while the Court of Appeal thought that this also meant that Mr. Taylor had not breached his fiduciary duties. The Privy Council, in advice given to Her Majesty in a judgment prepared by Lord Mance, concludes that the reasoning and decisions of the courts below cannot stand. The judge was right to conclude that Mr. Taylor breached his duties as a director by giving effect blindly and ignorantly to others' instructions to effect the transactions, and such instructions, even to the extent that they were channeled through Ansbacker, originated from the respondents in Ecuador and were causative of Mr. Taylor's breaches of duty. Second, the transactions did not involve exchanging debt or other assets for equity in any conventional sense. IMF surrendered its loan portfolio and other assets to Conticor, but did not receive any equity in Conticor. Third, the transactions were not the product of any long-term plan. They were the result of decisions taken in the teeth of a financial crisis when all other efforts to find outside investors in the banks had failed, and when any acquisition of shares in GFC was inherently risky. Fourth, 
no independent advice was taken, or so far as appears, consideration given to the purpose or rationale of the transactions from IAMS viewpoint, insofar as any financial information existed to explain the transactions, it was based on projections which were and must have been known to be wholly out of date by December 1995. The question was not whether the interests in GFC shares which IMF received had some value, it was whether they had any value which could honestly have been thought to equate with that of the cash shares and loans with which IMF parted in exchange. Seventh, the sh cash shares and loans surrendered were on the evidence worth their face values. Eighth, the values attributed to the GFC shares which IMF re received in exchange were in contrast not only wildly varying but on any basis also unrealistic. Ninth, no plausible reason existed why it was or could honestly have been thought to be in IAMF's interest to occur shareholding interests in GFC at the times of any of the transactions or to surrender its own assets to Conticor. The respondents failed in their evidence to provide any such reason or justification. Next, the courts below failed to analyze or address the above points and the judges finding that Mr. Intriago understood and approved the transactions or, or that the respondents reasonably understood him to have done so is unsustainable in the light of all the documents, the evidence and the probabilities. Lastly, IAMF is in these circumstances entitled to recover the face value of the cash, loans and uh, shares which it transferred to Conticor. Although the interests in GFC which it received in return are no longer available for restoration, this is as a result of the very risk which made it improper to transfer them to IAMF in the first place. The Privy Council will accordingly humbly advise Her Majesty that first, IAMF is entitled to recover the face value of the cash, loans with accrued interest and shares transferred to Conticor, being in total subject to correction by the parties, 191,953,500 1517.50 US dollars, and the second, any submissions on the accuracy of this computation as well as on interest and costs should be made within 21 days. The board's adjourned.